Hi all, I have quite an exciting game to show you from the Isle of Man tournament. Magnus Carlsen playing black against Eugene Peristalsen. Uh We have in this game d4 and Magnus chooses g6. So not even knight f6 which is kind of standard, he's inviting a, a perk or modern here. Sometimes they like transpose into each other. Uh, Peerts or modern. And here actually we get this kind of trendy treatment often called the modern tiger I believe because of the work of Tiger Help Person who's written a fantastic book about it well applauded actually by many GMs uh, as well so knight f3 the idea is to put pressure on e4 fundamentally with a bishop Vincato to put pressure there so like in say the Sicilian Nidoff you do b5 and bishop b7 so it's borrowing that idea it's a pretty standard idea in other openings so here we have standard moves actually and you might find the next move surprising but it has been played before I wonder if you can guess what white plays in this position which causes potential disruption if I give you five seconds so white play okay e6 yeah it's been seen before though knight g5 very dangerous threat of knight takes e6 that has to be parried and it looks like fish random here is going on what's going on when is Magnus going to castle in this game so yeah very dramatic position queen d7 rookie one knight f6 a4 tempting this pawn forward knight a2 and there is a pawn hanging here but would you dare take it well guess what Magnus does take it uh, and we have now Queen e2 this Knight's kicked back now King f7 so kind of manual castling here quite a dramatic game from that perspective Bishop d2 so now Knight takes b4 and it seems this is on the firing line after but b3 this disrupts at least White's pawn structure and actually ensures that later a nice blockading Knight is not going to be kicked with c4 basically uh, so we see this now white is capturing away from the center so that leaves this d5 square as a nice nice potential outpost square for black rook b8 discouraging for a moment bishop takes because this pawn could drop that's actually protected in advance of further torturing a6 so knight d5 we see this nice knight it's not actually taken here maybe white could have considered taking it taking it uh, this as, a, as an example continuation should be a small advantage for white uh, but uh, no he wanted his own knight in the center there knight e4 king g8 and this continues shuffling around here h4 queen e8 so this probably looks a bit strange all of this play it looks Magnus is keeping most of his pieces to the first two ranks apart from that knight and now the a6 pawn drops so white is getting back his pawns uh, queen c4 knight d7 knight c3 challenging that nice knight but that's reinforced with tempo queen e2 but this pawn's dropping now Magnus doesn't mind going a pawn down here white didn't oblige if white does actually go now a pawn up with queen takes if we look at this position it's actually pretty nice for black because these pawns are not really an extra pawn and that's a very nice blockade so that would be fine so white actually chose knight e4 not going material up and some more shuffling now rook f8 knight takes f6 committal decision perhaps that could have it could have waited with that knight on e4 there are some dangerous lines where sometimes knight g5s are possible even behind the scenes um, which uh, which are quite interesting but I don't really want to go into too many variations but sometimes yeah it's worth keeping that knight so it simplifies the position knight takes f6 and Magnus takes to um, like like this undoubling his pawns for sure and white does now take on e6 so we have a similar scenario so to the one I just described where we have this nice blockading knight on d5 and although white is a pawn up it's really a token pawn up black's position is very very nice these knights are looking after black and yeah 
he can also look forward to g5 now so we have king f7 rook e1 rook b8 as though b3 and these pawns in general need to be cared for rook c1 knight c8 knight e1 knight c e7 knight d3 and now this g5 and this causes a problem basically white does something which on the surface looks a little bit suicidal <laughs> he plays h takes g because it doesn't it open up the h part activates this rook which was pre previously asleep but what if white doesn't do anything if white plays b4 black will just take all h4 and probably use the g file a bit like this and get a nice position this sort of position you can see that it's going to be starting to favor black and these this this pawn is weak as well as these uh these guys this one is also targeted so black would get an edge anyway so white plays this hg which activates this h file rook which seems absurd but we're approaching move 40 as well so maybe not so optimal decisions start to be made b4 rook h4 with tempo to double the rooks so all of a sudden now black not only with a fantastic blockading knight on d5 is getting fantastic rooks which are doubling before white's able to do any sort of great coordination with his rooks they're just sitting around here being defensive bishop c3 and that's defensive as well you can see that black's position is just building and building here yeah this this is like chess made to look easy g3 rook h1 check and already there's now king safety issues after rook h8 to h2 check can you see what magnus plays in this position if i give you five seconds starting from now okay g4 check he's bringing the king out a bit uh yeah this this is starting to look scary <laughs> if king e4 uh, f5 looks like a, a useful move <laughs> for checkmate so king takes g4 rook takes c1 takes rook takes f2 cutting the king from coming back now uh, and now Magnus is in the process basically of trying to weave a mating there check here now rook takes b2 yeah it, all it needs is something like knight f6 to g4 and then rook h2 will be checkmate knight d3 hitting the rook for the moment though here we see uh, b5 okay and now yeah this plan of knight g4 and rook h2 is pursued but now rook b3 is no rook b2 is an attempt to try and defend so knight g4 isn't played immediately uh, if we have a look at knight g4 immediately rook b2 might be a useful defense instead here rook e2 now on rook b2 here this wasn't played rook b2 wasn't played b6 was played if we look at uh, rook b2 here then these loose pieces are targeted rook e3 for example then this and then that threatens knight f4 uh, check so if knight takes we take the rook so if the king got out of the way and we get this position it's just nasty for white this is just nasty pin here it's just looking nasty uh, if we continue as an example like this and these pieces are targeted for example white could end up losing a piece so yeah this nifty little finesse rook e2 against rook b2 has got some big implications to it we see b6 that's just taken and you see that the king is uh really being targeted for a checkmate now after knight e4 the game ended here because the threat is knight g5 check um well let, let me just show you uh white resigned if for example rook b7 then knight g5 check here knight f3 check and if the king goes to h5 then there's rook h2 checkmate yeah and and if the king goes to h3 then there's rook h2 checkmate the pawn is guarding g4 so yeah that's amazing that being woven here uh if we look at um let's see let's try king uh well there's, there's nothing much to do here so after knight e4 the game ended if g4 we just play the check there winning the knight on d3 
So yeah, this does spell kind of disaster for White. So with this game, Magnus has maybe helped popularize a bit the modern tiger. <laughs> so there, I think there'll be some extra book sales uh, for Tiger's book, Tiger Hill at Person. If you want to check out this modern tiger, it's basically using some of the, the great ideas in, like you get in Sicilian Night Off of attacking the center with a fear cat and bishop. So it seems like a great system for black, and I might try it myself as well because of this game. We are influenced often by the world champions and what they play. And Magnus Carlsen may have apparently been influenced by his new girlfriend to play in such a hyper modern style throughout the event with the black pieces. So very interesting choice of openings for him in this Isle of Man tournament. Okay, comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.